interesting though that you're a freelance writer at home in your home office yeah. and not in an office environment. Had you ever yes. had that desk job? <laughs> have you, had you, did you do yeah, any temp plenty, work? I've had plenty of desk jobs and uh, I worked in the corporate world for a number of years and so I know that that happens and it's you know when you have a corporate job that's your world. Mm -hmm. You know it's your social world, it's, it's where you are almost every day. So yeah. When you had that first uh, success with the uh, office Kama Sutra, what was the uh, what was your sort of self satisfaction? What what kind of feeling of uh, of completion or, or or achievement did you get from seeing your name on a on a new book that um, was you know was selling copies and and sparking a reaction? Okay, well this is an interesting uh, period to reflect on because. I wrote it and we had a hugely fun time with it. It was illustrated by a, a woman named Thorina Rose who lives in San Francisco. The illustrations are a scream, they're hilarious. And it was just really fun and everybody who read it loved it. And, um, and it was just a great deal of fun. And it had a pub date of September 14th, 2001. Wow. So we all know what happened on September 11th. So I had this huge tour scheduled you know, like dozens and dozens of interviews and travel, and it was a big, it was a big push. And I ended up, we canceled a lot of the tour, thank goodness. But what often happened was, I ended up doing a lot of the tour. And the context, the state of mind that we were in at that moment, this was not a funny moment. Right. So we ended up talking about, instead of talking and giggling and snickering about office romances, we ended up talking about the very serious idea of, you know, being in the world today and what it means. It was the timing of that book um, was it completely changed everything. I mean, you know, I think everybody's life was changed by 9-11, but in a really, you know, in my own little teeny little part of the world, it was like something swiveled and it just was a completely, and as a writer, I think I was certainly not alone feeling that what you're doing is, if you weren't writing about that topic in a pretty serious way, then you were wasting your time. And I think a lot of writers put their pan down for a moment mm -hmm. and had to think about, like, what am I doing? What really matters? It's, uh, yeah. So the first uh, Sunny book was, what, what was the title of the first Sunny book? Sharpshooter? Sharpshooter. And um, how, why did you decide to, to not write under your your given name and, and, and where did the name Nadia Gordon come, come from? Well, um, you know, there were so many reasons for using a pseudonym and it was a topic of a lot of discussion with my editor. So we sat and talked about this. Um, the reasons were that I had published a number of books under my own name that were um, very, very different than mystery novels. Mm -hmm. And we worried that it would be hard for people to l make that leap in their minds. Um, they're also originally, when we first started talking about the series, thought, okay, what, this is a, at the very beginning, so we rapidly moved away from this, but this is how the whole concept of a pen name came, got in the door in the first place. We first thought, wouldn't it be great to do a series that was light in nature, that was really fun, and that we could publish pretty frequently? And since I write somewhat slowly, we thought, well, okay, We'll have two writers and we'll work together and we'll be able to publish the books much more frequently mm -hmm. and it'll be really fun. It'll be sort of Nancy Drew because, you know, Nancy Drew was written by a collective of people. And it wasn't long before we got into the project and I realized, like, this is, no, that's crazy. This, you know, this is mine. It's entirely mine. It's an enormous amount of work. It's blood, sweat, and tears. There's no way I'm going to share this. But at that point, we had already kind of got used to the idea of having it be by Nadia Gordon. Um, I was a struggling gymnast as a child. <laughs> I had a great desire to be a gymnast and um, zero aptitude. Mm -hmm. And right around that time, Nadia Comaneci was in the mm -hmm. Olympics. And so I always wanted to be Nadia. So when somebody said, well, who do you want to be? I thought, oh, I'll be Nadia for okay. sure. Um, and I've seen you uh, speak at, at various library events. Mm -hmm. um, and you, here we are at the new Walnut Creek Public Library. Um, library. Can you talk a bit about the importance of libraries in your life uh, as a reader and then eventually as a writer, how do you use libraries today, you know, in, in researching or, uh, right. you know, use the resources uh, for, your, for your profession? You know, it's mostly, um, I certainly use libraries for research, 
And in book two or book one in Sharpshooter, I think Sunny goes to a library, goes to a local library to do some research. So it's something that I do that's really important to me that I love. Um, but the biggest thing I get out of the library is something uh, sort of less tangible and less, um, well, it's tangible, but it's not predictable. This, I think books have a capacity to call out to you. And I've had many debates with people about whether or not this can happen online, because of course you can follow, you can wander among the stacks online in theory, but it's not the same thing as wandering through the stacks of a real library and having the books physically present and just sort of around you en masse. Uh, I think for some reason, particularly as a writer, that is enormously comforting to me, as well as completely inspiring. The thing about a library is it has, um, you know, it's not just today's books, you know, it's, it's the, all the great books of recent history as well. Mm -hmm. And that's that mixture and that tangibleness. It's, you can't get it online and you can't get it at a bookstore. It's, and it's really important. I've also seen you um, speak at library events in, in San Francisco uh, and, and all over the Bay Area with other mystery writers. Mm -hmm. And there's this, there's this collaborative spirit um, for our event uh, here at the Walnut Creek Library. There's going to be a, a range of, of authors, but um, specifically you can kind of gather as a group and talk about that, that specific genre and yeah. the different nuances that each writer bring to it. So can you talk just briefly about that, that um, uh, camaraderie of, of of authors um, that you get to sort of see at, at library events. Well, that's the very best thing about being a mystery writer, and it was completely unexpected. I, you know, all authors like to talk to one another, and there are various gatherings where you can meet all kinds of authors. But mystery novelists have this; they're a clan, and you get to know one another. There are lots of events, national events, that mystery writers go to. VoucherCon in San Francisco this year, um, Left Coast Crime, the Edgar Awards in New York, Malice Domestic in DC. There are tons of um, conferences that bring readers, writers, uh, librarians together to talk about mystery novels. And there's a passion for the genre that um, it's just, it's wonderful. And it brings people together. And there's this, I think perhaps because they're addicting, people read mystery novels you know, the way they eat potato chips, just one after the other. And so it's not um, as though you have to compete with one another. You know, if somebody likes your books, they're going to like my books and the other person's book, and it, more is more. It's um, people who love mysteries, there is no threshold to how many they can consume. They're, they're just really eager to hear about a new writer mm -hmm. and a new series. And once they do, they read all the books and they can't wait to move on to the next, you know, so that's, it's a great joy. It's a really, I've made wonderful friends and um, the mystery writer panel discussion is really fun. We, I do them a lot and they're really a good time. That's great. Well, um, Nadia Gordon, Julianne Balmain, uh, thanks for coming. Uh, I know that you've got another book that you're working on and then another, Sunny McCoskey. So we'll be right. seeing uh, quite a bit from you in the near future and looking forward to that. Thanks again for coming to the Walnut Creek Public Library for My this pleasure. conversation. Great really to see fun. you again. And uh, thank you for watching Get Lit. Uh, make sure to tune in to future episodes. We're going to have some fascinating authors of, of all uh, genres, uh, fiction and nonfiction. So please tune in to future episodes and thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.